Hi, so welcome to my next little blog on building this community within your organisation. Now, the next thing we're going to look at after we've learned more about social capital is co-learning or the sharing economy. You know, we hear the term sharing economy in most everyday uses now. You know, we've got to look at the likes of sharing economy in homes which can be turned into hotels or people sharing their cars. But if you could bring this sharing economy into your work and have it as a sharing of skills and knowledge, then you're likely to implement more social capital, which is what I've talked about in my previous blog. So the sharing economy and co-learning, in essence, it could save your company money because, you know, having formal training when you could have people learning from each other might be a new thing, you know. Here's Steve, he's really good at coding or tech, and here's Sue, and she's really good at languages. They may need to use these two skills, so why don't you get them to train each other? Because you are creating then this trust and transparency in your organisation, but more importantly, you're getting people to work together and to integrate more. You know, when we look at what the future of work actually is, a lot more people are going more solo and more freelance. Obviously, that doesn't mean anything if you're running an organisation. However, what that means is they're connecting more in different ways. You know, you've only got to look at the rise of co-working or co-living spaces, for example. Now, if you were to bring these experiences into your workplace, I mean, let's take a look at a co-working space. People working on their own but connecting with different ideas. You know, they're learning from each other. And you often find a lot of free events where people demonstrate their skills and help each other along the way. Now, if you could bring that into your organisation, then you're helping to create what is co-learning, which is effectively people working, to collective, work, people working collectively as a group. And that's an important, that's important to move ahead in the company. And I think when you want to take new training opportunities, you would rather people do it from within your company, yeah? Because, like you said, and when we go back to that first slide, the social capital is happening. So co-learning equals co-creation. And this is where it can move on from. Co-creation is then when people start to form in those social capital environments, the trust is formed, the transparency is formed, Co-learning then starts to happen and people learn from each other. And then the next stage is co-creation. You know, you work on that creative thinking skills and you go and create and develop something. And that's really where you're going to get that innovation and that productivity from. Just think about it. When you look at traditional communities, people create events because of the love of doing it. And that's what you need to bring into your organisation. People that do it because they have the love of doing it. And that's sometimes what's lacking. So that's where we need to bring in more of that co-creation and that co-learning. Now, this is just a second foundation block of what I think makes up a great community culture. You'll find more information about me and how my book is, How to Build Communities in Your Business, uh, through robertmitten.com or check out my Twitter and all the other details below on at Bobby Mitten. Thank you.